22 of the most finely tuned athletes in the world are now locking themselves into the starting gate. These men are willing to push themselves and their machines to unthinkable levels to achieve their dream. Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Champion making massive sacrifices. Well, that's just a part of their everyday routine. They handle broken bones the way the rest of us deal with the common cold. They don't know fear. In fact, they just grab a handful of throttle and roost fear in the face. For one of these racing heroes, the dream of becoming Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Champion is about to begin. And it will begin with this gate drop that kicks off the 2018 Monster Energy Supercross season. Can Barsha put himself in the conversation? Can Anderson win another opener? Can Tomac have a better start than last season? And then just Roxon question mark. That's what I have. Which one of these riders will fulfill their dream of being champion this season? It all begins with this gate drop. The whole shot goes to Tomac. Barsha's right there with him. Around the outside goes Barsha. He's solidly in second. Martin's there in third. Oh, and Muscan gets to the inside of Anderson, and that's going to back him up just a little bit. Remember, Anderson and Barsha were your heat winners. Roxon's a little bit deeper in the field, inside the top 10. How about Martin there, the six on that Geico Honda? He's a spoiler. 250 rider on the east. Good battle here as Pike moves wow. past on the number 34. Weston Pike making things happen for the Joe Gibbs racing team. Tomac just two hole shots last year. Phoenix and Daytona, and he opens up 2018 with one. Looks like Muscan's made some good moves here through the pack. He's going to come through in fourth. Remember, Ricky was a little bit critical of him with his heat performance. Here's Roxon on the number 94. Right now showing in 10. Oh, get, look at that inside line just using the brakes that the Honda has. And that, that's Bowers on the 69. He's trying to get around him and Baggett coming along as well on the number four. Bowers, look at that, that triple after the finish line is quicker and it sets you up on the inside. I don't know why. Very few riders are using it. Just in front of them is Brayton on the number 10, who was very good in his heat race. There's Brayton. Here goes Roxon coming around the outside. Yeah, Brayton just didn't get through that first turn. Uh, area clean, made a little mistake. And that momentum on the outside that Roxon is carrying, and then it's a, like a, a single, triple, triple. Cooper Powered Webb by. and Roxon's teammate, Seeley, all in this next group. And Martin. Oh, Webb gets the hops, and that's going to allow Roxon. Okay, now let's see if Roxon goes outside. Watch this triple. Oh, no, he didn't pull the trigger. He might not have, have jumped it here in the heat race. He might not feel comfortable with that. Boy, he <laughs> jumps into those whoops and carries a tremendous amount of speed, Ricky. Yeah, he sure does. He keeps his momentum up, has a lot of speed, gets into him, almost jumps into him, gets on top of him, and floats right through there. Weston Pike, an impressive run in third. Jeff, Weston Pike, certainly one of the fittest riders in the entire sport. Well, he is. He, uh, he definitely has that sort of uh, bulldog image, and but what he's done from when we first saw him at Monster Energy Supercross is he's also worked really hard on improving his technique and his skill to match what he can do physically. Pike in third hasn't had a podium 
since he finished third in the season finale in Las Vegas in 2015. On his way here tonight. He's got, he's got Muskan coming inside. And there goes Marvin, the French rider taking the spot away. Let's see if Pike here, let's see if he tries to get back to the inside. No, no room there. Tomac on the right side of your screen. Now, I do find it interesting here with Muskan and then he's got Anderson just behind him. You know, we talked uh, uh, we talked about how those two riders rode a lot of off-season races, and Muskan had Anderson by just a little bit, just like he does here tonight. Roxon has gotten past Sealy on the 14, Martin on the 6, uh -oh. Ken now up to 6, and Sealy also gets by Martin. Ricky, how are you sizing up Ken Roxon's pace at this point? Well, he's looking really good. I feel like every lap that goes by, from being gone from racing so long, it's coming back to him. Each lap is a little bit more confidence and it's going, going. You can see it rising. The, the attitude and his riding style is changing. And it's really looking like the Ken Roxon we all know and love. Pike and Anderson fighting over fourth here. Jason Anderson on that Rockstar Husqvarna number 21. And Weston Pike having a really nice effort here tonight on the Auto Trader. Joe Gibbs Racing, Yoshimura Suzuki Factory Racing Machine, number 34. Well, there's just over 45,000 fans here packed into Angel Stadium of Anaheim. And when Anderson made that move on Pike, that was for that was for fourth even. The crowd was coming alive. Now let's see. Oh, oh that could have been massive oh, as Roxon's wow. foot comes off. Oh, wow, that, was that close, Jeff. Yeah, and that's the same section where Dean Wilson had that hard crash. Here it is right here because you're trying to jump over and like kind of stay low through all that. That was close. That'll get the heart rate up a bit. And remember, it's just a little mistake like that is what can take you out of this championship. And as good as Roxon has been through his career, as fast as he has been at times, he's won main events. He is, uh, he does make those little mistakes, but that time he pulled it off. He's got a tendency to do those little things and that's because he's pushing the limits right now. All of the riders wear a patch on the back side of their riding pants and Roxon's tonight says bleed for this, and I think that says everything about how far he's willing to take it, Jeff. Ooh. Yeah, I don't have, I can't add anything to that. That speaks for itself, but. Oh, Tomac is down. Eli Tomac, who was leading by five seconds over Barsha is down, and guess who is leading here at Anaheim? Well, that was my first question. Can Barsha put himself back in the conversation? And remember at the top of the show, when we talked about the championship contenders, I didn't add Barsha in, but the top four, they all have weaknesses, and that's why they couldn't beat Ryan Dungey. And now they've made these little mistakes along the way. And we mentioned the fact that Anaheim one has produced riders who you don't expect to be on the top step of the podium multiple times. Justin Barcia, Bam Bam, hasn't won a race since Seattle in 2012. And Ricky, that is 46 starts since his last win. Yeah, this is, uh, you, you know, seeing Eli Tomac, it looks like he's having some problems here. But it's those mistakes, like Jeff said, that these guys, if they want to be Monster Energy Supercross champion, they have to eliminate that. Eli, uh -oh. Marvin, all these guys. He, he's got okay. a big problem, Ricky. Oh, his, his, his pants, pants? come undone. His pants are undone. The buckle on his pants have come undone. Now he's stopping because and his pants zipper. are going to come down and he can't get. There it is. Wow, that I, 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 I haven't seen anything like that. And this is what we're talking about is eliminating these sort of mental mistakes and how they get compounded. I mean, Tomac, he's 20th, Jeff. 20th right now. And think about this. Well, let's, let's just see what happens here with Eli Tomac when he had about a four second lead. Just got it handled. Oh. I, I mean, that's mental. Right there, just a little mental mistake. And you can and see that's, the pants and that's, already slipping on him. Yep. And so 
now as we look forward here to Barsha, the number 51, the thing that comes to mind to me is how much Yamaha struggled last year with Cooper Webb as a rookie and Chad Reed as a veteran, and they just couldn't seem to get it together. And now they hire uh, Barsha as a fill-in rider for the injured Davey Millsap, and he's out front leading. He's going to have his hands full because Muscan here on the KTM yeah. has definitely focused and, and brought his game up for the main event. And let's not forget Anderson just a couple seconds back also. Parsha won his second career 450 start and twice in his first 14 starts hasn't won since. Pretty long drought. And we talked about how much momentum Muscan had coming into the season opener, having won the Monster Energy Cup in Las Vegas back in October, and a million dollar check. Then he won the Red Bull String Rhythm. Then he won the King of Paris and the King of Geneva. And can he win the season opening round now Here we of go. Monster Energy Supercross? There's your new leader. Well, that's what I told you guys about that 180 right there after that triple is that they're going to keep trying to work the inside closer and closer. Muscan has just made it look very, very easy. Let's should not discount the fact that he's been riding under uh, the Red Bull KTM 10, training partners with uh, the former champ or the reigning champ Ryan Dungey. And he's picking up right where Ryan left off. Jeff Eli Tomac is dead last in 22nd. Well, Ricky, this has got to be absolutely crushing to his title hopes. I mean, I know it's just a season opener, but mentally, that is a massive hit. Uh, well, it sure is coming off of uh, last year's Supercross season. At the end, we all know what happened. And uh, for this to happen in the first race, like Jeff said, a mental mistake, you know that it's slippery right there. And all it takes is just one lapse of concentration. And little things happen like that. And look what it's turned into. And and uh, and it's uh, I don't I don't remember when he fell that he was like holding his arm or wrist. It was kind of more about the pants. And just right now, like, I mean, has he mentally, like, the frustration is overwhelmed him? I'm, I'm not sure. I, wow. Tomac, as he leaves the stadium here tonight, if Muskan wins, Tomac obviously in last, would be 25 points behind Marvin leaving here. An incredible story as this season begins. Jenny, what do you know about Tomek's condition situation here? Well, and just trying to get a word quickly from his team, it was the shoulder that has oh, okay. been bugging Eli Tomek. So that's the latest, guys. He okay. did. He did slam pretty hard into that jump. I mean, it, because it, his body language really didn't give us any indication that way. I kind of, I, I kind of wondered was he holding his left arm or something a little bit, but. Here's wow. Barsha with Anderson right behind him. Now, Jeff, this is hugely important for Anderson because he is fully expecting to be a title contender this year. Third is great. Second would be a lot better. Oh, yeah. No doubt. He has got to get this. Watch the speed he's going to carry right here. Well, Barsha wicks it up. Here comes the inside. Anderson right there didn't oh. get quite to the wheel. Well, he couldn't quite get stopped. I think he was worried about running into him. Not well, so there. Maybe not. I mean, both of these riders have been known to not play well with others. Rocks it up to fifth. Pike holding solid with a spot in third. There it is. Yep, Anderson around the inside, takes it away from Barsha. I'll tell you what, if Barsha finishes on the podium tonight, that is a huge positive for Bam Bam. Yeah, it is, because remember, he, he had won his heat also. Here's Roxon now, closing on Pike. If he can get around Pike, maybe he has time to run down Barsha and complete this opening night with a spot on the podium. What a story that would be. Got about five seconds between uh, Pike and Barsha. And, um, Pike and Roxon here and Barsha up there in third. But yeah, for sure, trying to get on that podium is 
A little less than seven minutes plus a lap to go. When I talked to Eric Kehoe, team manager for the factory Honda team, he said one of the challenges is to just keep Ken patient as he works his way past Pike and not shoot for too much too fast. Yeah, Roxon looks like he's lost his visor on visor. his helmet. Yeah, so on that helmet, that's a Fox helmet that he wears. It's got a magnetic visor. And you'll remember from last year when he crashed and broke his arm, the, the magnetic visor popped off. That's a safety uh, or, you know, a performance safety, yeah. uh, you know, addition to uh, the helmet. But in this case, it looks like he might have uh, somewhere along the line when he made that mistake or or something else, he might have hit his head on the, or, you know, put his head down by uh, by the bar pad or something and knocked it off. Roxon out to Ford. Barsha is five seconds in front. Muskan on the right. And how about Chad Reed? The team name is CR22. No more 22 Motorsports. Chad just saying, look, it's a separate deal. No big factory rig this year. He and his wife, Ellie, have decided to go racing once again. He is absolutely passionate about this sport. The two-time champion from Australia. This is what his life, their life, is all about. And he's going for it once again here this year. And Jeff, he really hasn't spent any time on the bike. In fact, really what you're seeing here tonight is one of his very first practice sessions on this new bike that he bought himself to go racing. Yeah, exactly. And uh, before this event, he told us he'd had about four hours on the bike. He's riding the Husqvarna FC450. And uh, remember, he had surgery on that ankle, and that's why he just didn't have any have any time. But so what you're seeing is just pure natural ability. Like this is there's not a lot of quote preparation going into this. This is just Chad Reed, what what he can do with his God-given talent. It's his 21st year as a pro. He turned pro at 16 years of age in Australia. Shortly thereafter that, Ellie and Chad with a couple of gear bags full of whatever they own, left for Europe with a dream, getting to the United States and racing here. What a story their life has been. Two-time champion, Chad Reed. Well, Baggett just uh, really doesn't take a good rhythm through there. That allowed Tickle to go by, but now it looks like he might, well, well almost had it back there. A couple of KTM riders, two different teams. In the top 10 as we're watching Tickle Baggett Martin all in here, eighth, ninth, and ten. Look at Baggett really quick down the left side of the whoops there. The track has just been awesome. How many lines choices that there has been. I mean, these flat turns there in the final turn and then the first turn, riders are going wide on these flat turns. I mean, that's just not something that you normally see. So they've done a great job with the design. Of course, the consistency of the dirt has been fantastic. Jeff, and don't forget Jeremy Martin, who's running an eight uh, on that number six right there with a yellow helmet. He's only going to do a couple of these West Coast rounds of the 450 before he goes back east for the 250 East Championship. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, so he's getting some time in right there. There he is, number six, Geico Honda. Getting some experience, showing what he can do on that 450. Two and a half minutes and one lap to go tonight in the season opener. It's on to Houston next week. Well, and, and our lead right there, Anderson's only 2.5 seconds behind this rider right here, Marvin Luskan. 2.5 seconds. I mean, if you if you fall down, it's about a six to eight second. Time just, period to pick the bike back up, so. Just turned right 28 there. years old. Starting his third full season in the 450 class is Marvin Muskan. There's Jason Anderson just going past Chad Reed. Here comes Barcha next. They still run in the top three. Roxon has gained a little bit of time, but not yet onto the backside of Barsha. Uh, 
Anderson lost just a few tenths right there. I was wondering if he was going to pull another Houdini like he did on Cole Seeley a few years back in the 250 West. Made the pass for the lead with two yep. turns to go. It'd be nice to do it in, in the premier class here. He's not letting up. There's a minute 23 plus a lap to go. Anderson, he's charging hard still. And he's going to keep Muskan honest. Muskan's going to have to ride as hard as he can all the way to the finish if he wants to win the opener here. Peggy Latham encouraging his rider, Marvin Muskan. And, and what we saw right there was that what Muskan would have read is that and, uh, Anderson behind him was two tenths of a lap quicker. So kind of decode the. Uh, pit board there from the mechanic. Less than a minute in one lap. Marvin finished seventh in the points as a rookie in 2016 with five podiums, third in the points in 2017 with two wins and 10 podiums. Here we go, it's gonna be two laps, Ralph. 30 seconds when Marvin goes by. Three seconds separating Moose Can and Anderson. Yeah, Moose Can has wicked it up a little bit here. All that Anderson needs, though, is one little slip up by Muskan with a lapped rider, possibly grab a little bit too much front brake, and then all of a sudden it would give him that three seconds that he needs to make, uh, make a race out of it here with one more lap to go. One of the things Marvin told me when I asked him earlier today at track walk, why do you feel like you're ready to be the champion this year? He said, you know, I learned a lot about dealing with pressure watching how Ryan Dungey handled it when he was battling for his four titles. Of course, them being teammates for a couple of years, he saw it up close. Sorry, we had two to go. There's the white flag. I mean, it's one thing to watch and learn, but then you also have to go execute. Pretty impressive ride here so far because Muscan, remember, he was only fifth on the first lap across the finish line. So you got to think he probably had a couple positions further back around the first turn area. But he's sure making that Rebel KTM look good here tonight. The rider who came into the season with the most momentum from all those victories during the off season. And he's going to get a huge shot in the arm momentum wise as this season gets underway. Marvin Muskan will win the season opening round at Anaheim of the 2018 Monster Energy Supercross season. His third career win in his 38th start. Anderson is second, Barsha is third, and the incredible story of Ken Roxon continues with an amazing fourth place finish after disaster here in this very stadium almost a year ago. Yes, Marvin Muskan continues to be the fastest rider in Supercross competition as he takes the opening round here tonight.